Hydroboration oxidation is another method for the hydration of an alkene. It complements acid catalyzed hydration and oxymercuration demercuration. But it is distinguished from these other methods by the fact that it affords anti Marconikoff regioselectivity. The reaction involves two steps. In the first step, the hydrogen to boron bond of borane adds across the alkene pi bond. This step is called hydroboration because both hydrogen and boron are added across the alkene carbons. The second step of the reaction is oxidation using hydrogen peroxide in basic medium. This step converts the BH2 group to a hydroxyl group. Let's look at each of the two steps of the reaction in more detail. During the hydroboration step, the hydrogen boron bond of borane adds across the alkene pi bond and it does so in a concerted fashion, meaning that the new carbon to boron and carbon to hydrogen bonds are formed simultaneously. Consequently, this addition is syn. In other words, both groups add to the same side of the alkene. You may encounter borane, simply written as BH3, but you may encounter it in some other forms as well. Diborane, or B2H6, is an alternative source of borane, as is a borane tetrahydrofuran, or THF, complex. These alternative sources of borane ultimately lead to the same hydroboration product. The initial hydroboration product still contains two more boron to hydrogen bonds, and each of these remaining boron to hydrogen bonds can add across the pi bond of another alkene molecule. The final hydroboration product therefore contains a boron tethered to three of the substrate molecules. However, this fact is often ignored when drawing the reaction in a concise way. In other words, the hydroboration product is often drawn simply this way. The second step, oxidation, is much more mechanistically involved than the first step of the reaction, so it is often not drawn out in detail. However, the full mechanism for the oxidation does follow. Keep in mind that ultimately boron will simply be replaced where it stands, in other words, in the exact same position, by a hydroxyl group. Oxidation begins with attack of the conjugate base of peroxide on boron. As a result of this attack, boron becomes anionic. And the product of this first mechanistic step may be drawn in either fashion shown here. The three substrate molecules can be grouped parenthetically or they can each be drawn out individually. In the next step, the weak oxygen-oxygen bond is cleaved as a boron to carbon sigma bond migrates to the oxygen. This returns boron to a neutral state and breaks the weak oxygen-oxygen bond as hydroxide is displaced from the molecule. The net result of the two preceding steps was the insertion of an oxygen atom between boron and an alkyl group. Two more iterations of this process result in the insertion of oxygen atoms between boron and its remaining alkyl groups. Now, in two more steps, an alkoxide ligand on boron will be swapped for hydroxide. This process begins with the attack of hydroxide on the electrophilic boron. Next, an alkoxide ligand dissociates from the anionic boron, affording an alkoxide that is very nearly our final reaction product. In 
a final mechanistic step, the alkoxide is protonated by the OH bond on boron, and this generates the alcohol product. The attack of hydroxide, dissociation of an alkoxide ligand, and protonation will occur two more times to produce a net total of three molecules of alcohol product and borate as an inorganic byproduct. The oxidation step, as we have just seen, is much more mechanistically involved than the hydroboration step. But in some ways, it is actually less significant than the hydroboration step. During hydroboration, the regio and stereochemistry are set. So it's common to draw the mechanism, as you see here on this slide, only for the hydroboration step, in which the alkene pi bond attacks the electrophilic boron, and at the same time, the sigma bond to hydrogen migrates onto the carbon of the alkene that would otherwise have lost a bond. Let's consider a specific example in which the alkene is symmetrical. So the regiochemistry of the initial addition across the pi bond is immaterial. After oxidation, the same alcohol product will be produced either way. The reaction begins with the attack of the alkene pi bond on the electrophilic boron, and this leads to the migration of the boron-hydrogen sigma bond onto the carbon of the alkene that would otherwise have lost a bond. The hydroboration product incorporates both hydrogen and boron across the two carbons that were previously involved in the alkene. In the second step of the reaction, the BH2 group is replaced where it stands with a hydroxyl group. Notice that no stereocenters were formed during this particular reaction. So wedges and dashes are not necessarily needed in representing the product structure. In other words, we can draw the product in this fashion or in this fashion. Now let's turn our attention to a specific example in which the alkene substrate is unsymmetrical. Therefore, the regiochemistry of the initial addition across the pi bond will be quite important. As the alkene pi bond attacks the electrophilic boron, the boron begins to acquire a partial negative charge. And one of the two alkene carbons must therefore develop a partial positive charge. The partial positive is placed where it is more stable, and that is on the more highly substituted alkene carbon. In other words, electrons are flowing away from that center, leading to the development of a partial positive charge, which attracts the boron-hydrogen sigma bond, leading to the formation of the new carbon-hydrogen bond simultaneously with the new carbon-boron bond. After oxidation, it is plain to see that anti-Markovnikov regiochemistry has resulted. This is because the carbon of what was once the alkene that has more hydrogens has not acquired the new hydrogen during the course of the reaction. In other words, the outcome is the opposite of what we would have expected based on Markovnikov's mnemonic. Again, in this reaction, no stereocenters have been formed. So while the product may be drawn with wedges and dashes, that's not essential. And it's the same as representing the product in this fashion. Since two carbons of the reactant are involved in this transformation, it is possible that zero, one, or even two stereocenters may be formed during the reaction. In this specific example, a single stereocenter will be formed. Hydroboration first occurs across this symmetrical alkene substrate. The alkene pi bond attacks the electrophilic boron, 
and the boron hydrogen sigma bond migrates to the carbon that would otherwise have lost a bond. In this step, a single stereocenter is formed, and that is the center bearing the boron. Since borane can add from either above or below the pi bond, two enantiomeric hydroboration products may be formed. During oxidation, the boron is replaced exactly where it stands by a hydroxyl group. In fact, if you look back at the detailed mechanism for this step, you'll see that it provides no opportunity for any change in the stereochemistry of the center that becomes the alcohol. The net result in this reaction is that two enantiomeric alcohol products are formed. In this example, however, two stereocenters will be formed during the course of the reaction. As our initial hydroboration occurs, we have to keep in mind that this addition is a syn addition, meaning that the boron and the hydrogen add from the same side or the same face of the alkene substrate. They may both add from above or they may both add from below, but those are the only two choices. This yields two enantiomeric syn hydroboration products. And in the second step of the reaction, the boron is replaced where it stands with a hydroxyl group in each case. This affords two alcohols that not only have anti-Marconikoff regiochemistry, but they also have syn stereochemistry. In summary, hydroboration oxidation adds water across a pi bond with anti-Marconikoff regiochemistry. The hydroboration step occurs with syn stereochemistry, and there is no change in stereochemistry during the oxidation step. Since hydroboration oxidation does not involve a carbocation intermediate, no carbocation rearrangement is possible. The preceding has been an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, A Color-Coded Approach to Arrow Pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback, from Amazon, or in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.